Hello everyone, welcome back to another video by Eclip on my YouTube channel. I just finished the recording for a Boga Patreon page and for you who don't know, we are running the Boga Patreon page where I'm also one of the teachers and one of the guys who's making exclusive lessons and so tutorials on a Boga Patreon page. Just by following the link below, you will be able to check the Iboga Patreon page as well. As I just entered the studio, I realized that my battery on the camera is dead and instead of me waiting for the battery to charge i decided to make this video without the camera and i'm sure that you won't mind as all of you are already familiar with the look of my studio and of my covid infected face okay so i just have finished kick and bass alignment video for a boga patreon page where i show the kick and bass selected and if you want to see this video you will need to visit a boga patreon page as this tutorial was exclusive for that channel Anyway, this video is not gonna be about that. This video is gonna be about making the better envelopes for a much better mix in our tracks. So for this case, I'm gonna choose one of the loops which I already prepared and selected. So through the media browser in Cubase, I have selected one of the loops that I would like to use. Now, as I'm in the 140 BPM project, and as I have chose the one of the loops through the media browser, it automatically glued it or warp it as and mesh it to the BPM. So now this sample has already been through some time stretching process, which I really don't like. So to use all the loops and all the samples at the maximum quality and for the loops, the best possible solution in the Cubase is if you now leave it in a musical mode or like warp in the Ableton leave it like that and then if we use the scissors and then by holding alt we select the first 16th of the note and holding the alt key and click there it will cut the whole loop through the 1 16th so as I have set over here and now all the hit points are already on the grid chopped exactly where I needed so now I just need to select all of them and uncheck the musical mode and now I have chopped the whole loop exactly, but without the time stretch. Now I can apply the fade out on all of them. And this is the really important part. Straight away after you apply some time stretching, doesn't matter how good the software is, it will always, but always loosen up a little bit and lose some quality. And especially on the transients, they're not gonna be sharp as they could be. Now I will select this one in the next channel. I will extend it and I will make it just to have the as originals, just in order that we can A, B some of the results. So I'm gonna mute this one for now. This channel without the time correction, it has much, much better transients and much better hit comparing with one that has been stretched. So this is the first part or the first thing you can do in order to have a much better mixes is to be really careful of how much of warping you will be using. I know that warping is a super easy tool and that sometimes it's just much easier and you are able to work much much faster but every time you need to have in mind that there is some type of the compromise and what do you give advantage to the speed of your work or the quality so this is the compromise that you will need to choose when you are choosing which way you're gonna go will you use the warp or you won't I will always choose the quality before the speed as I don't mind of spending some extra time in order to adjust and connect all the samples to the project but of course it's up to you and we are all different and we all have to make those decisions now the main idea behind this video is to talk about the length or the decay I was spending a lot of time in the past trying to do a crazy work with the EQ with many other things but what I didn't have in mind is that the decay or the length of all of these shots is something that is really important and this is not only for the loops this is also for the lead for the kick for the bass so the sustain the decay the, the envelope of the samples themselves is the most important part for a good sounding track 
So if we have some frequency that is boosted on 200, like the decay and how long the decay is there on that frequency, this is what is super, super important. You will be also shocked, but also acoustically treated rooms. The most important part is the decay. If you analyze and record the noise and then you see that you have some peak in the room, generally when you see the waterfall, you will understand that this peak is there because this frequency is staying a bit longer than the rest of them. The rest of them getting spent and disappearing the space while some of those frequencies are hitting the walls coming back and they are staying longer and this is why we have those peaks it is the same thing when we are addressing the samples inside our project or the sequences like the leads in this case i wanted to, to do with the loops as i believe that with the loops it will be the easiest way to understand this sometimes those loops that are in the most of the sample packs they are kind of extended for example, this is really good sounding, it has really nice hi-hats, everything inside I like it a lot, but I think that the decay of all of these shots is a little bit more, and I believe that it's taking too much of the space. While we listen to this loop in the solo, there's nothing wrong, it sounds full, it sounds amazing, but when we start listening with the kick in the bass and with the rest of the elements that are still not in this project, this loop is gonna take too much of the space, I'm talking about the length. So. Every time I'm using the loops, I'm always trying to reduce or to make a better dynamic of them or the better envelopes of all of those shots. And one of the best things to sort that is the noise gate plugin. I'm gonna use the Fab Pro G. This is probably the Fab Filter's less used plugin, but I'm using it a lot. This plugin is just amazing. So how does it work? As we have threshold over here, at this point now is at minus 18. So what this plugin is gonna do, it's gonna pass the signal on the whole channel channel only if it's above minus 18. Every time the signal drops below minus 18 decibels, it's gonna close the signal. But of course, it's gonna have the release and attack. So in this moment, it's 100 milliseconds. So every time the signal passes beyond minus 18 decibels, then it will need 100 milliseconds more of the release and then it's gonna close it. So it's gonna clear out everything that's below minus 18, which is super, super handy. First of all, we can see that on this channel, the hit points are on a different level. And this plugin works the best. I want to normalize and set these hit points on the similar level. As you can see, it's passing this one, this one, this one, but those two are already getting disappeared. So what I want to do before this is I want to merge and to set all of those peaks around the same level. So I'm gonna move the Fab Filter Pro G on the next slot and I can use the standard clip which is taking the less possible TPU power for this. And this is exactly what I wanna do. I want to set all of those peaks on the similar level. And now I can use threshold to address this much better. I will put attack on zero and I will put release on zero and I will put the hold on zero just in order that you can see what this plugin is doing. So this is the way how we can use noise gate plugins in order that we fix our mixes. And this I'm gonna apply to plenty of different loops while I build my tracks. So I'm not gonna use another loop. I'm gonna try to find something from, let's say, Thomas Penton. Let's say this one. I'm gonna insert it. And I'm gonna duplicate this channel just in order I don't need to insert everything two times. I'm gonna set this one over here. Of course, as I already mentioned, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna turn it off. Yeah. So we can 
play around with the envelope of the heat on the loop channels and that way we can increase a lot our mixes and trust me when i say you just need to try just to chop some of the loops and just try to apply a little bit of fade out on them and you will understand how much for all of those hi-hats especially those sharp ones how much the decay is important in order to fix the mix Well, this kick is pretty pretty nice I must say and it's made from kick too as you probably just I believe that the transient is a little bit slower but anyway this is not the case of this video anyway I hope that you like it stay tuned and see you soon with another video bye ciao